We've passed the equinox point, and we're heading for the summer solstice, the longest day. The sun's rays reach us from an increasingly high angle. It's getting warmer. As the Earth leans towards the sun, we see it higher in the sky. Its path gets longer. The days get longer. If your window faces east, find a mark on the horizon in the morning. You'll see that every day the sun rises a little more to the left. And in the west, every evening, the sun sets a little further to the right. If your window faces north, find a mark at noon. Tomorrow, the shadow on the building opposite will be a little lower than today. And if you face south, find a mark on the floor. The line dividing light and shadow at noon will move a bit closer to the window every day. All these little things show us the great sweep of the Earth as it leans further towards the sun each day. In April 1997, the Hale-Bopp comet flew past the Earth and the sun. Its path is at a right angle to the planetary plane, so it circles well above the sun. From the Earth, this is what it looked like. After the sunset, the comet was over the spot where the sun went down. Comets are bright and visible because of the gases they throw off when they're warmed by the sun. So we can use comets as flying thermometers, showing us where it's hot and where it's cold in our solar system. As long as a comet's as far away as Saturn, its core is frozen. No tail, no hair. On Saturn, the temperature is minus 200 degrees centigrade. The comet approaches Jupiter, still no hair. On Jupiter, the temperature is minus 170 degrees centigrade. As it reaches the region of Mars, the comet begins to warm up. It starts to throw off gas and grow its hair. On Mars, the temperature is minus 30 degrees centigrade on the sunlit side. Approaching the Sun and Earth, the comet screams out full length. The Earth is the only place in the solar system where the temperature is mild. 17 degrees centigrade on average. Then the comet moves away, its core freezes again, and its hair disappears. We can't see it anymore. The Earth is the only really temperate place in the solar system, the only planet where there is water probably the only place where life can exist. The Hale-Bopp comet returns towards the distant regions of the solar system. Unlike some comets which are intercepted, the famous little Schumacher-Levy comet passed too close to Jupiter in 1994. Captured by Jupiter's enormous pull, it began to circle the giant planet on an eccentric orbit, which took it closer and closer to the surface. The twisting of gravitational forces finally tore apart the comet's core. And the next time round, the fragments crashed into Jupiter's thick gas atmosphere. It was the first time we could photograph such an event. The Swift-Tuttle comet comes back every 130 years, roughly. It passes so close to our orbit that each August, the Earth crosses the tail of debris left behind by the comet's tail. The Earth plunges at 100,000 kilometers per hour into this cloud of meteorites, which light up in a fiery display of shooting stars. When the Swift-Tuttle comet last passed in the 19th century, the astronomers calculated and predicted its return. But comets aren't too reliable, and Swift-Tuttle arrived several years later, 
in November 1992. The comet crossed our path while we were still here. The Earth swept through its tail nine months later, towards the 12th of August. The next rendezvous with this comet is in 2126. But then, it's scheduled for August on the 14th. The Earth will be very close. Like every year, it will pass this crossroad on the 12th. If the comet doesn't arrive until the 14th, all well and good will have gone past before it comes. But if it's two or three days early, your great-great-grandchildren may have a close shave. Every month, two or three days after the new moon, if the sky's clear and you're away from the city lights, take a look at the moon. You can see the little crescent that the sun continues to light from under the horizon. And to the left of this crescent, faintly lit, you can see the complete lunar disk. Where does this gray light come from? It's Earth light. The sunlight falling on the Earth, which our planet reflects onto the moon, and which the moon finally reflects back to us in a cosmic game of pool. The light from the sun hits the Earth, bounces to the moon, and is reflected back to the Earth. The best moment to see Earth light is always the third, fourth, or fifth night after the new moon. On the sixth night, the moon is already so bright that it outshines the weak Earth light. Circling the Earth, the moon will leave the sector where the Earth reflects the most light into space. Gradually, the Earth light will fade to reappear in a month. <laughs>